post-training sun session. Best thing in the world. No sunscreen, obli. Never wear sunscreen. I'm making this video because I think it'll hit home with a lot of people and I need to get it off my chest because it's a pet peeve of mine. It started back in high school. I remember back in high school, there'd be a guy dating a girl. She'd be such an awesome girl. She'd be a great girlfriend and the guy would just be like, oh, she's crazy. She's needy. Now there's some crazy girls out there, but you'd ask this guy, what did she do? Oh, she just texts me a lot or she gets upset when I get with other girls or something like that, you know? It's like, brother, she ain't crazy. She just likes you. And that was when it kind of began. I was like, man, you know, what does that say about you? If she's crazy for liking you, it means you're a piece of crap, right? It means that you're not worthy of being liked. That's how you view yourself. Unless you actually are a piece of crap and then she still likes you, then yeah, she's crazy, whatever. She likes to be, likes to be abused. But then it carried over into business. And in business, can't stand it whenever somebody gets a sale and they come back to the group and they're bragging about it. Man, I closed that person. Oh, I got him so good. I got him with this line and this line and this and that. And it's not like they're saying, man, my presentation felt so good and I just really explained the value. They were really smart. They were awesome. I just had the best connection with this customer. No, it's like a win-lose type of bragging way. And in business, it's almost always a win-win or in the case that I'm in or that I have been in, it was a win-win with it being more of a win for the customer. So it wasn't even accurate in the first place. It was just pure ego, super annoying. Another way you could look at this is you sleep with a girl, right? So there would be guys where they would sleep with a girl and then immediately, oh, they're a slut. Well, again, what does that say about you? Because she slept with you, she's a slut? So basically, you're not worthy of being slept with and only a slut would do that. So things like that don't make any sense. You know, I come from the standpoint of, and every, everyone else who's a high level person comes from the standpoint of, if this person does business with me, it's because they're smart. This is the common sense thing to do. If this girl likes me, of course, of course she should be in love with me. If I sleep with them, yes, I'm an attractive man. <laughs> of course, it all makes perfect sense. And now the next thing that I'm seeing is that it ties into marriage. And there's a bunch of guys out there where when I tell them that I don't want my wife to work, that I want to be the one that makes the money, that has the goals, you know, I want to be the one that leads the family and I want her to be at home taking care of the kids, taking care of the family. Like, no, no, no. I need my wife to contribute. I need to, she needs to have some sort of job. And they correlate um, her making money with value. That to me and it's not just, okay, everyone has their preference. So I want to preface it with this. Sure, some people are going to want that and that's fine. But what I don't like is they'll put down my future wife for not working in the corporate world or making money, physical money. Okay, there's direct ways to make money and there's indirect ways to make money. I'm going to make all the money in the world. I already feel like I do. I don't need any more money. That's not what I need. What I need is someone who can be the backbone to the operations of the family. Okay, so every family is gonna need their different things. There's not one right or wrong way to do it, but don't put down my future wife for staying at home, cooking, cleaning. So she's cooking all the food for us. She's making sure the food is healthy, tastes good. She's going out and getting it. She's making sure the house is a great place to live. She's helping with the family. She's running my errands. I need her to make a phone call, make the phone call to this customer or call my business partner or write out an email to this person or I have to put engine coolant in my car. You think I wanna go and drive down to the auto parts place and buy engine coolant with my time and then go and fill it up and do all the BS that I have to do to make sure all this crap happens. No, I need to be focused on business. I need to go out and take over the world. I don't need to be doing all this other stuff, okay? So that's stuff that another person, AKA my partner, my wife would be able to do. I need that. And that's very similar to business. So in business, you have the front end, which is sales, and you have the back end, which is operations. So usually the way it works is the business gets kicked off by the front end. So you start getting sales, 
things start moving, and then you need help on the back end. The back end is the systems that are put in place. It's the communications, it's the financial aspects of it, it's the people who see things from like a broader oversight that make sure that, that when the sales come through, they're handled properly and they actually work. Otherwise, without a back end, you don't even, you, you just are getting worn out on the front end, okay? So not one is better than the other. It's yin and yang. There's the 50%, which is the front end. So in a relationship, it would be I, one person. It doesn't have to be a guy or a girl. It just it has to be one of the two. So you have to go out. Someone has to make the money. That's just plain and simple. You got to serve the world so that you can serve the family. And then someone has to go on the back end and be serving the family. So that way the people that are out serving the family can keep, I mean, that are serving the world can keep serving the world. It's just a very basic dynamic. So you have your, your front end sales, marketing, you have your back end operations, installs, financials, accounting, all that. Okay. Perfect dynamics. Now, if you have two people that are mediocre in both, that's a mediocre family. I mean, look, you can find a way to make anything work, but that's what I want, right? And so when I share with some of my friends, my business partners, that I don't want my wife to work, I want my wife to focus on me and serving the family, and they put that down, homie, that's the wrong way to look at it, right? Um, then you have guys out there that are, again, putting it down, and they're like, oh, yeah, like my wife should, but then this is what they think. They think, my wife should be submissive to me because I go out and I make this money and I give her a house and blah, 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 and she should be submissive to me. Um, but then whenever they see that the, the wife is offering her services, they're like, oh yeah, you don't offer enough. And they're like, you know, trying to put that role down. Listen, man, you put your customers down, you put your wife down, you put anyone down and you don't have a team and you see how far you get. It is a team, no matter, there is not ever one player who is more important than the other. Cause without a team, you literally have nothing. And I wanted to make this video before I have my wife because I don't want anyone coming back and saying, oh, you're just saying this because you know your wife's watching and your family's watching and all this other bullshit. No, no, this is how I, this is how I feel. I'm as single as single can be. <laughs> and, and this is how I feel, okay? And this is how I've been feeling. And it's disgusting when people put down the very thing that they want most. It just is uh, anti their goals. So there's that. Next thing, I can already hear the arguments. Wouldn't that make me a beta male provider? All right, let me touch on some things. You have women telling women, don't serve a man, go out and get your own money, be independent, basically be a bitch in a lot of cases. They're telling them that's how they should act. Then you have uh, guys, never marry a girl, treat them like shit, play them, never pay for anything, all that other stuff, okay? Or, or, or if she wants money out of you, she's a gold digger. <laughs> okay, just as ridiculous. All right, I'll say this. A beta male is a beta male, and whatever he does is gonna be beta. Whatever an alpha does is alpha. It doesn't matter if it is a typically beta thing to do. If an alpha does it, it's alpha. Uh, plain and simple. Alphas are alphas, betas are betas. Case closed. If you guys wanna call me a beta, go, go right ahead. So, here's the deal. You have to, you have to marry a girl if you want a family. And trust me, I've, I've thought of every which way to get around it, truthfully. It's like maybe I should just have a kid with 12 different girls. Maybe I should just never get married, but like have one chick. Why not just have a completely open relationship for the rest of my life? I thought all this stuff through because family is one of the three big categories of life. You have athletics, you have business, and you have family. There's only three of them and then God's above it all. So here's why you need to get married. It's because one, or here's what I really should say, why you need to be in a committed relationship with some sort of written contract, whether it's from you or the government or airplane mode engaged, no more phone calls. You can get away. You can get away with sleeping with any girl you want in any relationship you want. I've done it. But here's where you're gonna falter. If that girl starts to not feel loved, which of course, inevitably, 
if you're just going out and doing what you want to do and she's being loyal, how would that make you feel if that was, if that was you? <laughs> She'll stay with you. But she's not going to give you her full love. She's not going to be all in. She's not going to have great feelings towards you. And on top of that, she's going to eventually probably start to hate you and maybe even sabotage you a little bit. And when things ever go sour, guess who's not going to be there to ride for you? She's leaving. And that's what you see. So see this rich guy in the movies or stories about him. Yeah, my wife left me, blah, 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 blah. Man, I'll tell you what. If you're a high value male who is attractive and you are good to her, dude, she ain't going to leave you. <laughs> you can't you couldn't run from her so what marriage does or at least the commitment is going to do that they've earned obviously is it's going to make it to where they feel comfortable enough to go all in all in with no fear of a guy leaving her no fear of i'll be kicked to the curb um and then on top of that, because that's just the, focusing on not having the downsides. Because the upsides, you're gonna have essentially a girl who is giving you the most blessed energy you could ever have for your entire life, giving you every ounce of her soul and heart. That's what isn't talked about. That sounds great. <laughs> for this to work, it has to be built on the right foundation. So the foundation has to be based on attraction. This is obvious, but people make the mistake all the time of leading with their money or with the girl of leading with their commitment, uh, leading with their loyalty, leading with their sex um, as the guy trying to pay for things, trying to be uh, overly agreeable trying to offer too much value in a sense of external value rather than uh, value that they just can give with their presence and their being and who they are, what they know. So attractiveness, like I mentioned before, is actually not a physical thing. That's just one small, small aspect of it. Real attraction is energetic and it's, it's a way of being, okay? personality. Okay. So that's why it doesn't matter how you look in a lot of cases as a guy, you can make up for that in other ways. If you're really lacking to get a girl that looks a certain way or is a certain way that you want to get who you want. Um, as a girl, you can do the same thing with a guy that you would want if you're lacking in some area too. That's why actually a great example of this is in the UFC, I started noticing because I would look these guys up. I would say, oh, this guy's the fucking man. I'm going to look this guy up. I want to see who, he, who he's who he picked out to marry. These girls don't look good. Almost all of them look bad. What that tells you is that these girls have incredible energy. Or something else about them is just incredible. Uh, something about who they are. Not that... Because, look, any girl can offer commitment. Any guy can offer commitment any girl can offer sex, any guy can offer money. That's not special. What's special is who they are. So these girls had something inside of them, some sort of calming presence. Their prayers were powerful. They're um, very loyal and they were fun to be around, very positive. They're an escape from his everyday life, whatever. Just something about their connection was so solid that they were just perfect together, right? And so... If you want to build that attraction, uh, you have to have, ironically, the best of the feminine energy and the best of the masculine energy. And whoever man and woman has the best of both is therefore the best man or the best woman. So female energy is very flow. It's very present. So female energy, great flow. Male energy, very structured. Okay. A lot of guys, though, they fall into too much structure, no flow. 
a lot of girls, way too much flow, up and down, up and down, no structure. Oh, I feel bad right now, so I'm gonna go cheat. Or um, I'm gonna go eat this horrible meal because I feel bad. Guys, miserable, depressed, they commit suicide. More guys commit suicide than girls by far because no flow, just put your head down and go. So you have to have the best of both to become a high value male, a high value woman, and that is how you can build the foundation for a beautiful love.